So that was our workshop um, to um, kind of strengthen capacity on the global processes that exist and what they might mean on the ground, why they are important and why uh, or how we and other partners like ACT Alliance um, or Faith to Action have been choosing to be engaged in ICPD for the last six or so years. Uh, it was a really fun workshop. Um, it was uh, a lot of energy in and around also what we mean by advocacy. That can mean so many different things for for a faith actor. It's both the advocacy that you do uh, internally within uh, within your faith institution maybe um, on SRHR gender issues, but it also that public facing work that you do in the public sector, which we focused on um, towards holding decision makers accountable on important SRHR commitments that they have done, and uh, the role of faith actors both in implementing a lot of uh, a lot of SRHR work on the ground which isn't always visible um, and also how to just engage in policy processes in a way that, uh, that makes sense for, for their context. So one of the most important thing that you need all to think about when you do advocacy is what do we want to change and why do we want to change it? That's your basic because you always have to be very comfortable in what you're doing in able to do advocacy. You have to know your subject. You have to know what you want to do. The other part is to look into what we will call in our world stakeholder analysis. In other words, who are the ones who need to be changed? What, who, to whom will you direct, direct the change? Why and how will that change? become part of you. And that comes back to advocacy on different levels. You have advocacy on local level, local authorities, or in some cases you work on, on SRHR or gender issues and you're looking into the private company who pollutes the water in the mining community that you're working within and destroy the way of hygiene and etc etc so then you direct that part so you also have to look into that kind of problem that you look into in a different level and in other parts you want to address on a pan-african level and then you look into and see Africa Union we want to change something at African Union level or in the West African part you will also look into the ECOWAS CDO how can you change their protocols how can you change their way of working because that's one way to work on. But the other part of advocacy can also be to talk to the principal in the school because you want to change things, how things are in school. That's also advocacy. Parents and teachers associations are doing advocacy. Never forget that. In changing things in schools. It can be all from what we discussed before, sexual education in school, but it's also m more about hygiene and sanity in schools, for example. How do you, do, how do you make it safe for girls to go to, to the toilets and so on and so on? That's part of an advocacy to work on. And how, how do we do it? How do we change? How do we achieve this change and, and direct it? So we, in doing that, you have to look into the boundaries. You have to look into your allies and your enemies. If you do a very simplified part, who are your allies in the ones you want to change? And who are your enemies in this case? It's hard to say enemies, but the one that you actually would like to change or the one that can also be enemies, the ones who actually want to destroy the things you want to change. They don't want that change. They think it's dangerous with that change. Or for some reason, they will undermine your work on to change that. And that's your enemies. But some of your enemies can also be your allies. Don't ever forget that. So you do up a team, a schedule, and looking into them. And that's what we also call a stakeholder analysis when you do a work on advocacy. I said this is a very short session and this is just part of it. So I will end by two things. It's extremely important in advocacy that you never work alone. 
because you never work alone. You always work with others. You can be as an individual changing things. In Southern Africa, you see, in South Africa, you see Nelson Mandela as the icon and so on, but he never changed it. He didn't do that alone. They were all people around him to do that. So you work alone, but that's also part when you look into your results and your achievements. It's not only what you did which is an achievement, it's what you did together with others. And that's very important for you all saying, yes, things are moving forward. And we have contributed to that by doing things together. And by this part, I will actually, coming back to not alone with the ANC, yesterday, one of the big icons of in South Africa, in the ANC, uh, Lindeby Mabusa, ambassador in Sweden in the 1980s, died. He, she left us. She's also a very close relative to my friends, so they call her Google Lindy. Um, and one of Sisonke Simang, one of our relatives, put up yesterday a quotation, but I think it's exactly by this. It's not only working together, but you will also be in the forefront and you will actually inspire others to come with you and to also change. So she, she said, we don't just open doors for those who will come after us. We do so to the ones standing right next to us, still trying to decide what to do with themselves. If we yump, they might too. Advocacy is many things, uh, and it's not uh, done towards one actor alone, but I want you for this session, we're going to focus particularly on the advocacy that is happening towards public institutions, or so state actors. So this is what we will be talking about in this session now. That doesn't mean that that's the only advocacy that you all engage in or that is needed for the change, but it's the one that we will be talking about right now. And another thing, just to get everybody on the kind of same page of things, uh, what is advocacy? What is even SRHR? Sexual Reproductive Health and Rights. Um, I put up this image of an umbrella because uh, I think that this is a very telling how I used to, how I, how I tend to look at it and how a lot of actors tend to look at it, not just me. I'm not uniquely special in how I look at this issue. But an umbrella is a good way to look at this area that we mean with sexual reproductive health and rights because under that umbrella exists a number of issues that we work on, that our communities are affected on, that we as people ourselves are affected on, that we might need services on throughout our lifespan. It's a whole lot of different things. And not everybody in this room or any other actor that works on SRHR might be able to work on every part of that because of expertise, because of cultural context or other things. But we know that it's part of this thing that is where we... Um, where we assume this. This is actually one definition that came out in 2018 by something called the Guttmacher Lancet. They did an upgraded definition, and I like, I like this one, so I, I wanted to share it with you. So they mean with this umbrella, sexual and reproductive health is a state of physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being in relations to all aspects of sexuality and reproduction, not merely the absence of disease, dysfunction, or infirmity. When we look at that, it means that everybody, all throughout our lifespan, is going to have matters uh, regarding what our sexuality and our reproduction. It's going to need help, support, services. And what are the human rights that are connected to those needs? What is the services and information and resources people might need over the course of a life? So just to keep that in mind, that we talk about this very broad, but also sometimes very specific things. So, um, when it comes to what things are called and how we define things at the global arena, there's been a number of global commitments and processes that are quite important to mention. Uh, and what we're, one of them we're going to talk about in particular uh, is ICPD, the International Conference on Population and Development. The next slide will bring in a little bit closer onto that one. So, I'll leave that one just now as it is. Other ones, I don't have every single thing here either, but some of the most important ones could be another important conference uh, that happened in 1995 called the Beijing Conference for short, 
where the Beijing Declaration and the Beijing Platform for Action was taken and agreed upon by a number of nations. And there it said that SRHR is, per, is a prerequisite for women's participation in society. And that one is followed up every year in something called the CSW, the Convention on the Status of Women. And last uh, year, no, yeah, this year, that was uh, 25 years later, it was also commem commemorated with something called the Gender Equality Forum, where a number of individual countries and actors also made commitments on how we still want to work towards this Beijing Declaration. There's also the Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030, and there's very relevant SRHR goals under 3, 4, and 5. And every, every year, or every other year, depending on who is up for who is up um, uh, for review, countries voluntarily present how they're doing in terms of these goals under something called the Voluntary National Review. And then there's the whole human rights agenda or the, the follow-up of human rights at the Human Rights Council. And there, uh, the CEDAW Convention is a very important one when it comes to women's rights and, and also SRHR. So, ICPD. Um, this is a, I'll read this out, this is a quote from a statement uh, in 1994 where the World Council of Churches was present uh, at the Cairo conference. So the first one um, when this happened and I, the World Council of Churches said many lovely things in their statement but I thought this was particularly lovely. Among the churches within the fellowship of the World Council there is a wide spectrum of approaches to these issues. While respecting these differences, we are seeking to encourage and maintain an open, constructive dialogue on them, both among ourselves and with other churches and people of other faiths. Pretty much like Faith to Action is doing <laughs> right now. So uh, faith and these, this agenda hasn't, haven't been strangers to each other. What is probably the World Council of Churches might not have come out with that statement now, but it, because it's a bit more polarized right now, but then it came up with this, the, with this lovely statement. So ICPD, International Conference on Population and Development, was a 1994 meeting in Cairo where 179 governments adopted a quite revolutionary agenda and a program of action uh, where they called for all people to have access to comprehensive reproductive health care. And before, I w um, it was quite different because it was the first time that the global community and kind of governments went away and discussed reproductive rights or reproductive health issues, not just as a big statistical argument about demographies and populations and, and a lot of these big ways of looking at uh, population trends, but it looked at what are the human rights related to these, these infringements and these needs. It was the first time that there was ever a connection to these needs also means that there's people that have rights and how are we going to make sure that people are getting access to these rights. And be, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it, it was very important for that reason and that governments and communities has a duty and that these rights are not just essential for the human rights of people but also for global development to reduce poverty and before I go into like how this happens and is followed up right now, I want to just uh, call upon Profess uh, Ahmed Ragab, who was there in 1994. So I, d I just wanted to ask you, what was it like? Why was it important? In just one sentence, I would love to hear from you because you're the only one. <laughs> it, um, it was uh, from outside like a carnival. Uh, people from different faiths from different colors, from different wearing, from different uh, sexual orientation, um, uh, they were there. And everybody was celebrating the way uh, he likes. For example, LGBT community was uh, celebrating, uh, hippies were celebrating, everybody was there. But the scientific program itself was very, very comprehensive. 
and it took a lot of debate and the dialogue and uh, two uh, major organizations intervened the um, uh, from the christian side and from the uh, islamic uh, side and uh, they put pressure on uh, the committee and the committee actually to uh, give a statement which solved uh, the ma majority of the problems uh, in uh, the uh, chapter of principles the first principle that every country can adopt what is in the program of action according to its laws uh, cultural and religion and and by this statement only, we have uh, a, a defense against those who attack uh, the ICBD, the uh, abortion conference, the LGBT conference, or everything, uh, uh, because this was the uh, image. But when we uh, are saying that the conference itself is saying this statement and we are not obliged to uh, follow uh, all the program of action. Although the program of action was unique, very, very, very strong program of action, uh, but there, is, uh, there was a major problem regarding abortion and uh, LGBT. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a... Very comprehensive. Oh, it, we have the we have a tech problem, do we? Yeah. I will just pull this out for now, and then we'll see if Maria, maybe you can come and help us, or somebody's helping us. Ah, we're getting help. Good. So I'll just keep uh, keep on trucking on until we get it sorted. Um, thank you, Professor. You you very much captured what. There's been a lot of controversy um, uh, and also a lot of blown up controversy <laughs> that the, the conflicts and the polarization has been quite blown up about this, about this conference because really it was a very comprehensive agenda that human development requires all of these things and it very much is just like that it, ha it can have to be contextual and uh, we work with whatever countries, wherever countries are at but these are some of the principles that really matters. And obviously, human development contain a lot of important things around um, uh, reproductive health and rights, but also a lot of other things, urbanization, migration. There's a lot of things in regards to the human development agenda. That, so this, it's bigger than the SRHR issues, of course. But it has been, unfortunately, quite a polarized ar arena, uh, underblown by we, some religious actors that have been quite active in saying that it's only about... Uh, very particular parts of, of uh, um, that it's about abortion or um, LGBT, on, which are important issues, but they are not even stated in this uh, program. <laughs> um, so uh, it's uh, it's a very comprehensive program, that, but it doesn't mention those things. Um, but for the last six years, Act Church of Sweden has held a presence there uh, at the annual follow-up, uh, which happens uh, at the CPD, the Commission on Population and Development. And we've done that with Faith to Action, very importantly, and Act Alliance. And a number of people that, some couldn't be here because of the visa issues, but a number of people uh, was here two years ago at the Nairobi Plus 25 Summit, which is similar to the one that was the Beijing and then there was the Gender Equality Forum. There was the Nairobi Summit two years ago, where many, many commitments were made by countries and governments and uh, faith actors and private sectors to say this is still an important agenda, we need to work uh, towards this. So, that's the very, like, what it is. When we go there, what do we do? And what does that look like? What can that look like? Uh, and this ICPD agenda is not looking very different from any other kind of global negotiation. Um, at the UN or any other kind of multilateral agency. Um, what, it's a something, what happens when we go there? What happens before? What happens during? What happens after? And I'm going to specifically mention that because uh, those things, what happens before, during, and after, sometimes we tend to focus on the during. It's about going to New York and it's about 
networking and it's great that is something that is a little bit of a problem in general about these things but it is really where we follow up that governments make sure that they do what they say they do um, so therefore the planning is very important the follow up is really important so with that I'm going to say we've learned this we didn't used to do this <laughs> I'm speaking from experience what it is not is that it's maybe not relevant for everybody. We've also learned that if you're not working in policy processes in your context, it might not be the best use of your time. It might not be uh, the best place to go. It might mean that, um, uh, that yeah, attending in itself is not, can be really great and a great learning experience, but it's not necessarily maybe the best use of your time or for your advocacy. Uh, it's not also a one-off thing. Uh, just going there and being there is not, it's not enough on its own. And with that, we're also speaking from experience, because that's also a lot of what happens at these things, because it's very exciting to be at the UN. But what it is, if we break it down, is making statements together with others, as we said again, like advocacy doesn't happen in isolation, it has to happen with others. We make statements, what we think governments should focus on, Maybe a lot of that time it is about not forgetting the religious sector, engaging with the religious sector in terms of the specific theme on, on the conference that happens. It's also about building the capacity of partners. There is a very direct link that you can speak to your government and government officials. The Ministry of Health is there often. You have direct links and maybe sometimes even possibility to be part of the delegations and influence and have connections beyond that time. It's about building relations with other actors that are there, uh, multilateral, civil society. And it's also about making the link and bringing it home. How is this relevant for us and the work that we do? How is it relevant for our general work? And how is it specifically relevant to our policy or advocacy work? And here we go then, linking to local which could mean many, many, many things. Bringing it back and linking something to the local level is not just relevant for advocacy. Um, but one thing, if we look at the ICPD, this very, very broad agenda around how human beings should flourish in the world, really. Uh, faith actors do that work every day. If you look at what the program of action says and what you all are doing, you do that all the... You just might not frame it as doing and contributing to the, the program of action for the ICPD. But faith actors do work on communities and human flourishing every day, including for family planning and reproductive health and rights. Um, another way in terms of linking it, we've been to New York and we've done this thing and now we're home. How is it actually then implemented? What are governments doing in terms of they're saying all these lovely things at the podiums and their country statements? How are they actually allocating money for that? How are they implementing these, this, 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 um, these commitments that they're making? So that's something to really like. That's the work before and after. How is it implemented? Are they doing what they say they should do? The ICPD, for example, is also something that doesn't just happen in the countries, individual countries. Before the big one that happens globally, there is regional processes. There's one for Africa, there's one for Latin America, there's a lot of, lot of regional processes. So there's also, of course, then regional commitments to these. What does that mean for, for Africa in regards to this agenda? And making the connections and lobbying to the ministry in between the annual commissions and saying, well, next year you're going to be focusing on this item in the agenda. We think it's really important that you consider faith leaders and faith actors in the diversity as part of that. So that's, that's the ICPD, the global to the regional and, uh, and, and local. And as I mentioned before, the Nairobi commitments is a very important part of it. It's part of the same agenda. It's a little bit different in terms of uh, weight, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. It's really important. Co countries have committed and said that they would do things to reduce uh, maternal death, uh, gender-based violence, um, and that's something we should keep uh, them accountable to. 
But there's also other uh, important linkages that we can make if we look at SRHR as a very broad umbrella of important issues that we work on. Who are the other actors and uh, places and processes and follow-up mechanisms where we can hold uh, government officials accountable? And there, of course, the AU. And, and that doesn't mean that it's this issue only maybe falls under health. Maybe we can find it under gender, as you know. Maybe we find it under another agenda, another item agenda. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's not obviously siloed. These cross-cutting issues that impact a lot of different ways. So we have to keep our eyes peeled and open, which I know you already do in terms of like, well, this is an SRHR issue right here in this climate strategy. Uh, there's also the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. That's the ACHPR. Yes. The East African Community, EAC. The SADC, this uh, South African Development Community. And ECOWAS, which is now the Economic Organization of West African States. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so those are all places where this, this, this issue comes in and we need to follow it up or pl potential for us to follow it up. There's also something else um, that is a very important mechanism that happens every few years, maybe in your country, maybe not, um, uh, but uh, all the countries that um, have signed up to human rights in general. Uh, have something called the Universal Periodic Review. And on a cyclical nature, sometimes these um, countries have to report on how they're doing on human rights in something called the Universal Periodic Review, UPR. That's a very important space to put in at the national level. These are the human rights infringements that we see in our community in terms of SRHR gender. And, and this is why it's important to, to follow that up. My main takeaway also would be the importance of just not walking this path alone and that we need to work together um, and that's always something that can be easily said uh, but it, it requires meeting it requires resources to be able to meet and plan and, and do together and um, because it's so easy to get stuck in your own in your own project or in your own bit of work but there's so many similarities and uh, learnings and, and, and strategies that we can that can be done together uh, so platforms like this and uh, networks like this that really seems to really mobilize people because there's a lot of energy in this network and people really show up and are very committed to doing the work in whatever capacity they may be. Um, I think just investing in, in the right platforms and this is one of those. <laughs>